Hello, everybody, and welcome to the White Hatter YouTube News Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm Darren. Uh, I like how you go. And I'm Brandon. Yeah. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's get into some news topics from last week, shall we? Yeah. Uh, In the news. First news topic is, are you ready for Google, Google Glass round two? Really? Yeah. They're Google Glass is one didn't go over very well. well okay, so report. I, in fact, I think it was a complete <laughs> failure. Uh, yeah. So uh, according to reports that Google is working apparently on an AI headset uh, estimated to be released in 2024, given reports and rumors that it will be self-contained and self-powered, so it won't need to be connected to a smartphone. It is his own basic smartphone in glasses, and uh, apparently it's running Android. Okay, two comments. Mm -hmm. uh, first comment, um, that's just a rendering. They don't know if they're actually going to look like that, right? Yeah, no, okay, that, that, so, that's just estimated. Okay, so first, thoughts. it's kind of a cool frame because if you notice, I got my, my new frames on. Yeah. I got new frames, right? Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Good, good, good. Uh, do they make me look studious? No. Anyways, so um, number two, uh, if that's actually what they look like, it looks like Boba Fett on the new Boba Mandal Fett, yeah. yeah on Mandor you know, the Mandorian, right? Where. Um, his helmet, he has this thing that comes down in front of his eye to target things, right? I mean, that's kind of, yeah. So it kind of looks like that. So I, I'm hoping that that's not what they're going to look like because I don't think anybody would wear those anyways because most of the other glasses that we see coming out, like Spectacles and the Ray-Bans from Facebook, they're all integrated into the lens. They don't have an external pop like that, right? The yeah, yeah. difference is they don't really have, like, augmented displays in them at this point in time. What don't? Uh, the um, Spectacles 3 and the Spectacles Ray-Ban. Spectacles 4. 4. 4, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or is and, it, is and it Ray... the 5s that are the big chunky ones? No, nah, Spectacle 4s are the big chunky ones right now. Right, yeah. yeah. So 4s so I, I don't see being used as often right? because they're definitely more bulkier. and, yeah. and, and They look like Max Headroom sunglasses for <laughs> those of you who were born in the 80s. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right? So, the, but these ones... I don't think anybody, if the, if that's actually what they're going to look like, I don't think anybody would. If they look like the original ones at all? Yeah. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you, know, you, I'm, you, know, you know which ones I'm excited about? Which ones? Apples. I think, you know, Apple mm -hmm. is coming out with something, but they're being very coy about what they're doing and they're tang taking a little extra time. Uh, virtual reality is kind of like uh, fighter pilots, right? When they're practicing in simulators mm -hmm. where they're actually not flying, that is... Uh, virtual reality. They're in these machines, right? Like that's virtual reality. Augmented reality is when they're actually in the pilot seat and they got their helmets mm -hmm. on and they have all the displays popping up in front of them so they can see what's going on in real life and it's augmented with, with the data. I think what you're going to see Apple do is they're going to find a hybrid between virtual and augmented. Because right now, a good example, Oculus, right? Mm -hmm. Facebook or Meta, 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 Meta's product, right? Yeah. That is virtual reality where you put on these big headsets mm -hmm. and you got the earphones. That's augmented reality. Mm -hmm. Whereas Facebook's Ray-Bans and um, Spectacle uh, for sunglasses, they're more of the augmented reality right where well, they, they have to be if you're going to walk around anywhere in public that's that's you don't trip over see that's where i'm going with this i think what's going to happen is i don't think people if 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 you again i'm just hypothesis i'm looking into my crystal ball right with regards to the meta metaverse uh -huh. metaverse verse, verse, verse. um i don't think the uh, the virtual reality goggles like oculus I think they're going to go away the Dodo word. Well, they're used for like gaming mostly. But I th actually think augmented reality mm -hmm. will now be integrated with gaming. So that's that's why I, if I, well, if we already I was, have that with like Pokemon Go yeah. on your phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if I was a betting man, I would bet on augmented reality on glasses, but not those ones. <laughs> well, we'll see what they turn out yeah. like. Uh, ideally, if they can integrate the screens into the glass, yeah, uh, without any other extra parts on them, uh, that will be the win. <laughs> you know what's funny? I'm actually now seeing a lot of people on places like TikTok and the other videos. They're actually wearing glasses, although they don't need them. In fact, a lot of them don't even have the glass in the frame. Yeah. They're wearing them as like fashion statements, yeah. right? Yeah. Kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, Unlike us old fogies that actually need glasses. Well, you need them too, and you're not an old fogey. I'm just saying. Uh, what else we got going? 
Next new story. Amazon's opening its first physical what? retail store for clothing. Okay, hold on. I know, right? It's kind of an oxymoron. Th yeah. Like, I, what? I thought the whole idea of Amazon was that you could purchase in the privacy of your home mm -hmm. and then have the products delivered to your home. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the reasons why a lot of the mom and pa shops mm -hmm. were quite concerned because we saw brick and mortars that were unable to compete with Amazon because Amazon's prices were much cheaper because they didn't have to pay for renting or leasing a building, right? So what you're telling me here is they're actually going to have a brick and mortar store? Yeah, well, I mean, what's the biggest challenge with shopping for clothing on the internet? It doesn't fit, so you send it back. Right. So this is a potential way of kind of reducing uh, that. So they're launching a store, uh, I believe it was later this year, uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, and yeah, what you're able to do is basically go to the store on a tablet or like an iPad. Yeah. You're able to, I mean, it won't be an iPad, it's Amazon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> on some kind of tablet screen, you will be able to select uh, uh, options of clothing and it will be automatically sh sent to your or changing dressing room oh. and you'll be able to try it on test it out uh, before you actually go ahead and purchase it either in store or obviously you can when it's not available in store for purchase you can obviously have it shipped to your house via amazon you know prime delivery two-day delivery kind of thing oh. uh depending where you live even the same day delivery interesting so uh, i know they're messing around mm -hmm. with this and other things like um grocery stores where you can go into yep. stores now and prepay and buy and blah blah yeah or so, there can be in stores you have your phone you just scan your yeah. uh, amazon on account and yeah. just pick up what you want and yeah. leave the store and it charges you your Amazon account. It's this, super convenient. This will be interesting, right? Because it's, you know, it, it'll be in, it'll be very interesting to see what happens. I mean, they're still going to have to hire employees because how else are they going to keep the product safe so people don't walk out without paying for it? Well, I mean, the whole point it's it's Amazon, right? There's cameras and scanners and everything. Yeah, it's but, no different than their than their cashierless convenience stores. Yeah, so but you... in today's world where everybody's wearing a mask now when they go in, who cares if there's cameras? You're not going to be able to know who I am. Yeah, you have to scan your Amazon account first before uh, you go into those stores. Oh, you have to verify with your phone that you're an Amazon customer. Uh, so, I mean, Amazon has a tracking in place that kind of prevents that stuff. Huh. Interesting. And, and it's it's been trialed in their convenience stores. This one will be interesting. This mm -hmm. will be a good one. I think we should bookmark this one and follow it up in a year to see what happens, to see if it's going to be maybe as popular as they want it to be. I don't know. It'll I mean, be, I think that's the biggest problem for clothing online is yeah. sizing and fitting. But yeah, for sure. I think this will be a way to kind of Boy, fix their that. stock in their store will have to be huge. Well, not necessarily, because when you think about it in, like, traditional clothing stores, uh, you have to – you have to walk their aisles and there's space for walking and yeah. the displays are nice. Yeah. If all you're doing is walking to like a little kiosk area and you're selecting your clothing there, yeah. the entirety of the floor space can be dedicated to high capacity uh, storage. Yeah, maybe like you know, like what you see in a shoe warehouse, right? Where you walk into the shoe warehouses and they they only have a couple, and then everything else is all stock. But yeah, this will be interesting to follow for sure. Mm -hmm. Update from last oh, week. Uh, we Apple, talked about this last week. Yeah, Apple. So right now, and st actually still, is Apple is a bug in Safari where if you are on the internet, you're logging to your Google account, websites you oh. visit can see your unique Google information. Yeah. And in addition, it will have a record of all the places you visited in that browsing session. What's the update? What's update version is it? Well, uh, people have noticed the update is in the release candidate version 15.3, oh, which is I, not yet released yeah, as of I just, the date of this recording. Yeah, I just got the iOS 15.2.1 update that came in yeah. today. So interesting that this is in a the 15.1 release candidate. So hmm. I we, again, this isn't really a quick fix. You there. mean 15.3? 15.3, yes. You yes. said 15.1. 15 point, yeah, no, that's older. 15.3. Um, yeah, so, and obviously the the, the, the subsequent 12.2 uh, in uh, Mac. So one of the things I find about Apple, I'm an Apple fanboy, as you know, uh, but, you know, once vulnerabilities are identified, they're pretty quick at fixing them, right? So it's not that quick, though. Normally, when no. there's issues, like, they do quick hot fixes. That's true. This one is in the release candidate. Oh. So, I mean, like, why not a hot fix? Maybe because it's not as big of an issue? I mean, oh. it's not like a significant, well, mm, that depends, right? Because you can link someone's Google information to all the sites they've been to. Right. Which I guess is, a, depending what sites you're visiting, can be right. a really big problem. Yeah, I guess. So, huh. yeah. So, news on that one. Uh, no update as of the recording of this date. Huh. Uh, it's funny. We talked about that last week, and all of a sudden, boop, they're now in the process of getting it patched up. 
but not as fast as they usually are. Not true. Next article is researchers hack Olympic Games app. We talked so, about this last week too. Um, or we talked about taking phones and we mentioned that wouldn't it be nice for the Canadian government to give all our athletes uh, phones. We'll talk about that in a second. But what's this one? So Citizen Lab, which is one of Canada's top privacy security research labs in the country, uh, decided to do an analysis on the My 2022 app, which is the official Olympic Games app. Uh, which that, all athletes are required to have for immigration. upon entry on immigration into China. Yeah. Uh, problems are is that the app, either intentionally or by just laziness, uh, has poor security in place where encryption of sensitive information is not properly protected. It can be sidestepped. Um, do you actually think China would do anything accidentally? Well, the, well, what Citizen Lab kind of came to the conclusion of is all the information the Chinese government already has. They don't need this app to collect that information anyways. Mm -hmm. So uh, the hypothesis is more of just laziness and quickly building an app just for the sake of it. Were they able to find if the app integrated with other functions on the phone? Well, yeah, I mean, the app can access other information. It can, it can request access to other mm -hmm. parts of the phone, which obviously if you're running phones, you can disable those features right. in your settings. Like don't use GPS. Don't but how use... many people do that, right? True. Oh, that's, well, yeah. And uh, that's that's the whole whole question around um, privacy. We talked last week on the show about, yeah. you know, there, there are suggestions of uh, countries suggesting their athletes use different phones yes. while traveling yeah. uh, for the Olympics. We actually said that that should be happening, right? We actually said that wouldn't it be nice if the Canadian Olympic Committee actually gave phones to all the athletes. Well, funny enough, the International Olympic Committee is giving out phones and SIM cards to all athletes. What kind of phones? Uh, Samsung. Okay. Um, which is approved Ooh. to be used in China, uh, including the Canadian team. And apparently Canadian athletes have been briefed on surveillance concerns. Okay, what you just said, you concerns. said which is approved in China. So you can't bring an iPhone into China? Well, Samsung is... is You can, but it, it's a phone that, that has a lot more... Uh, prevalence in that country okay so it's more yeah yeah, yeah. i get it. uh likely that was probably the negotiation in the back rooms between the olympic committee and china in terms go of what figure. phones that they would allow go figure uh, so the canadian olympic committee has now giving samsung phones and sim cards to athletes to all their athletes including the canadian team and you can see an article here Smart from earlier from earlier in the month about the canadian athletes being briefed on surveillance concerns while competing in the olympics smart idea yeah. Smart idea. Proper pre planning prevents poor, poor performance. performance, right? So I think given all the challenges surrounding China and what it is that they're doing, I, I'm just, I hope, I hope that a lot of athletes still won't bring their own devices because I still think there's going to be a couple that want to do that, be it a cell phone, be it their laptop. And what they all need to know is that as soon as they cross into China with those, those, those devices, there's risks, right? I mean, that's just travel, international travel anyways. Yeah. When traveling with, with your own devices, that can be subject to search or seizure. Yeah. Uh, which, I mean, do you really need your own device? Because everything's in the cloud now anyway. Yeah. Some people may want to bring their own laptop because maybe it helps them to take videos that they're taking and edit them and, you know, do that kind of stuff. <laughs> Buy a cheap one on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, that's true. I mean, <laughs> it's just, you know, the cautionary note here yeah. is just that when you're going to a country like China or some of these other countries, um, you shouldn't be taking your own device. I mean, we, we mentioned last week how we we advised Chinese students who are here in Canada on uh, student visas that, you know, when they head back to China, not to take the devices they were using here back to China. Yeah. Right? The, the big question is what might be legal on your phone here or yeah. in other countries may not be legal in the country you're visiting. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are getting themselves in trouble because yeah, they agree. might have certain freedoms with the Internet. I agree. Where they are currently residing, yep. but when they travel what's on their phone is now illegal. So why take the risk, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why we educate those who are coming from places that are here on student visas from places mm -hmm. like China. Because we have a fairly large Asian uh, based uh, uh, student visa program here in Canada, mm -hmm. especially here in BC, right? Oh so, yeah, definitely. And with that freedom, a lot of those young students, they want to have the access that they don't necessarily have in their countries. And because these devices are recording every place you're going, what you're doing, when you go back to your home country, if they take the phone and dump the phone, you could be in big trouble, right? So that's yeah. why we say to them, listen, when you head back to your home countries, don't take the device that you had, right? Don't, yeah. Just don't do it. 
Yeah. And if you do decide to do it, uh, you you do so at your own risk and peril. So, and we have heard stories anecdotally from students who are here from some of those countries who said, yeah, they know friends who returned back to China and bad things happened, mm -hmm. right? So just to be aware of. But this is a good thing that the Canadian Olympic Committee have decided to do that. Good on them. If I had my white hat on, I'd tip my white hat. <laughs> and that's our news from last week. Thank huh? you all so much. And uh, we'll see you all next week. You bet. Bye, everybody. See ya.